Determining the correct helmet size is the first and most important step when fitting a player into a football helmet. Just as each player has an individual skill or talent, each player will have an individual helmet size in direct proportion to the circumference of the player's head. To get the most accurate circumference measurement, use a cloth measuring tape, fixing the tape approximately one inch above the eyebrows. Guide the tape around the player's head, ensuring the tape remains flat and taut against the player's skin and hair. When the tape has traveled completely around the player's head, determine the helmet's size by the number that appears when the orbit is complete. Here's an example of a circumference measurement guide, which comes in handy when you're matching a player's circumference measurement to his corresponding helmet size. For the most accurate results, refer to your helmet manufacturer's circumference guide. Before putting on the helmet, make sure that the correct size appears on the helmet's size label. After confirming the appropriate size, the player should hold the helmet with the thumbs over the bottom of the jaw pads and the fingers against the exterior shell. Bring the helmet down at a slight angle with the face pads first touching the temples. For additional leverage, place the index fingers into the ear holes. This should help bring the helmet straight down into position. All helmets feature an array of interior padding generally positioned at the front, sides, back, and crown of the helmet. These pads are for the comfort and protection of the player and can often be adjusted to improve player fit. Many football helmet models feature air inflation fit systems. The manufacturer will provide a fitting booklet with a step-by-step -step guide to help you with the inflation fitting process. If your helmet does not feature an inflation fit system, the manufacturer may provide other fitting tools, pad sizes, or accessories. Please refer to the fitting booklet that accompanies your helmet for detailed fitting procedures. Regardless of your helmet model, there are a few goals in achieving a properly fit football helmet. A properly fitted helmet should rest approximately one inch above the player's eyebrows. To avoid injury and discomfort, a player should never wear a helmet that is positioned too low or too high. Follow the manufacturer's instructions if helmet height adjustment is necessary. As a final height check, interlock your hands on top of the helmet and press down on the exterior shell. A properly fit helmet will exert pressure on the crown of the player's head. If, when pressing down, the player feels pressure on his brow, he does not have a proper fit. The interior padding at the front, sides, and back of the helmet should give the player's head firm, cushioned support. There should be no room for twisting. The skin of the player's forehead should move with the padding at the front of the helmet. If the helmet slides easily over the player's forehead, refer to the manufacturer's instruction to adjust the fit or try a smaller sized helmet. Football helmets usually have adjustable pads at the sides of the player's face and or below the player's ear. These are often referred to generically as jaw pads, but they can come in different shapes and can have important fitting and protective functions. When properly fit, these pads should feel firm against the player's face, jaw, or under the player's ear, depending upon the helmet model. If they look or feel loose, if there is space between the pad and face, change to a thicker size. If they're too tight, change to a thinner size. These pads are sometimes air inflatable as well. Refer to the manufacturer's instructions for changing pad thicknesses or adjusting inflation. Finally, a snug centered chin strap is essential for proper helmet fit. All helmets come with either a soft or hard cup chin strap. Buckle the chin strap into the snaps located near the helmet's ear holes, making sure the cup is centered and snug over the player's chin. The chin strap is adjustable and can easily be modified to fit the player. If the cup fit is loose, if it is not firmly pressed against the chin, tighten it until it fits properly. With the chin strap buckled, the helmet should feel comfortable and snug. Chin straps are available in multiple sizes to best fit the player's chin. To take off the helmet, the lower chin strap attachments must first be unbuckled. Next, the player should place an index finger into the left and right ear holes of the helmet. Finally, the player should press his thumbs into the bottom of the jaw pads. This grip will give the player the necessary leverage to lift the helmet straight up and off his head. Nicks, streaks, and grooves on a helmet's exterior are anticipated effects of football contact. 
wear and tear is commonplace. However, if a player's helmet looks to be cracked or compromised in any way, secure a new helmet immediately. Remember, a properly fitted helmet does not prevent the serious head or neck injuries a player might receive while participating in football. So practice and play sensibly. And as always, teach and utilize proper form and head positioning when participating in football contact. For detailed helmet fitting instruction, refer to your manufacturer's instruction guide. This concludes our helmet fitting tutorial. Good luck this season. Visit usafootball.com for the best resources in coaching and player development. Determining a player's chest size and shoulder width are the first things to do when fitting a player into shoulder pads. To get an accurate chest measurement, wrap a cloth measuring tape around the upper torso of the player, beginning and ending in the center of the player's chest. The number that appears when the measuring tape meets is the player's chest size. Write down the player's chest measurement for future reference. To determine a player's shoulder width measurement, stretch a measuring tape over the natural contour of the player's shoulders. Starting from the tip of the left humerus and ending on the tip of the right humerus, do not measure straight across. The number that appears over the right humerus will be the player's shoulder width measurement. As you did with the chest measurement, write down the shoulder width measurement for future reference. Now that you have an accurate chest and shoulder width measurement, you can give the player the shoulder pads that are best suited for his position. Jack's chest measurement was 32.5 inches and his shoulder width measurement was 16 inches. We'll take Jack's measurements into account and fit him with shoulder pads that are designed for his size. To ensure that every youth football player is fitted in the correct shoulder pads, refer to the individual sizing charts located in the manufacturer's catalog or on their website. To put on the shoulder pads, slowly bring them down over the player's head, being careful of the nose and eyes. Tie the front laces and then pull the straps to connect the front and back of the shoulder pads. If the shoulder pads come with belts, buckle them. Once fastened, the belts and straps should establish a tight fit in the area of the chest and back without irritating the player's underarm region. A tight fit in these areas will lift and lock the pads into place over the humerus. When locked into this position, the shoulder pads will absorb an impact and direct its energy away from the humerus. Once the pads are on the player's shoulders, make sure there's no pinching or binding in the collar or neck opening. A player should be able to turn his head from side to side without pinching the skin located around the neck opening. Next, determine where the foam padding lies in relation to the tip of the player's humerus. For the best fit, the foam padding should lie at least one quarter inch above the tip of the player's humerus. Make sure there is coverage over the sternum and front upper shoulders of the player. Also make sure there is coverage over the player's scapula and rhomboid. Properly fitted shoulder pads will cover and protect the player's shoulder blade as well as the upper musculature of the player's back. To ensure a proper fit, double check that there is no pinching or binding in the collar or neck opening. That there is at least one quarter inch between the foam padding that extends past the tip of the player's humerus and that there is coverage over the player's sternum, scapula, and rhomboid areas. A proper fit will give the player the best protection and the range of motion he needs for his position. This concludes our tutorial. Good luck this season. Visit usafootball.com for the best resources in coaching and player development.